Alright guys, I'm going to go over a couple examples. Uh, one doing the proof with the segment edition postulate, and one doing the proof with the angle edition postulate. Uh, just for you to kind of, uh, if you need some um, help with this at home, you know, then uh, go through this proof, see if you can do it on your own. And then uh, watch the video and uh, see if you get it right. You can fast forward to the end. You don't have to just watch me do it. You can check the answer at the end. But if you're not getting this, um, then, you know, go through me working out this proof and uh, see if it helps. And if you're still confused, then just make sure you ask me a question when we get to class. So let's just go through this. It says B is between A and C. And we know AB equals 3X plus 4, BC equals 5X minus 6, and AC equals 38. We want to prove that X equals 5. Now, one good way to kind of start off is just draw the line segment and kind of see what the picture looks like because it can kind of help you figure out where you're going to go. So if we know B is between A and C, well, I can put A and C uh, as the endpoints here. That's what that means to be between. Okay, so if B is between A and C, then B must be somewhere here. And just drawing this picture kind of helps us see, you know, oh, okay, we're going to be using the segment addition postulate most likely because that's what follows when you have uh, B is between A and C or something written like this. And this picture just kind of helps us stay organized. Okay, we also know these facts. So here's what you should do. That's the first step is just write down what you're given. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm just going to say for step one, I'm going to say B is between A and C. Okay, that's what you should do. And then I'm just going to write down these facts here because this is also given. So A, B equals 3x plus 4. I'm going to say BC equals 5x minus 6. And lastly, AC equals 58. So really the first step, as you always know, is just copying down what's given. Okay, that's the reason. So now when we have this information, we can start writing what does this mean. So if we know B is between A and C, then we can use the segment addition postulate. Okay, and we can write it like this. So this is the reason why I had to draw this picture. A, B, we know we're going to say A, B plus the B to the C. So B, C has to equal the A, C, the whole thing, this big one here. That's going to equal A, C. And the reason for that is it's just that um, the segment addition postulate. Okay, we've been using this a lot. Okay, I don't want anyone, I don't want anyone at this step being like, what? What's the segment addition postulate? Like you've never seen it before, okay? We've been using it a lot, okay? So um, this is the segment addition postulate. That's the reason. Now, what can we do now? Well, think about what we're trying to do. We're trying to prove that x equals 5. So we need to get an equation that has the x's. And here, um, we know the relationship between a, b is 3x plus 4. And we can make the substitution here. We can do it with also a b, c, and a, c. So that's what I'm going to do for step 3. I am going to just substitute what I know about AB, AB equals 3x plus 4, so I can substitute it in here. So this is going to be 3x plus 4 now, plus BC, which is 5x minus 6, equals, and AC is 58. So we can just say 58. So what was the reason for that? Well, that was just substitution, substitution property of equality. So make sure you spell out the whole thing, okay, to get full credit. So that's all we did here. Now... Let's see what we can do. Well, I can identify my like terms, the 3x and the 5x. I'll box those. And then in red, I'll circle the 4 and the negative 6. There we go. So what does that mean? That means that, let me write down what the step 4 would be if we combine the like terms. That means 3x plus 5x is just going to be 8x, right? Um, plus 4 minus 6, that's negative 2. So actually, I should say it. A minus 2 here equals and nothing changed over here 58 All right, so what was the reason for that that was just simplify now here's a warning that I want to tell you you better not say the addition or subtraction property of equality for this step okay because I know what some of you are thinking some of you look at this and be like well we uh, we added the 3x and 5x to get 8x, and the 5 minus 6 gives a negative 2. So we must have a, we must use the addition property of equality. But that's wrong, okay? We didn't use the addition or subtraction property of equality because we're on the same side of the equation, okay? If you ever combine like terms on the same side of the equation, we call that simplify. The only time you do addition or subtraction property of equality if you uh, if you move things to both sides of the equation, if you add or subtract the same thing to both sides of the equation, okay? So don't make this mistake. 
Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, we can keep on going with this proof, right? So we know, uh, what can we do? We can add 2 on both sides of the equation to get rid of that 2 here. So we can work on getting x by itself. So that can be 8x equals, um, and if we did that, that's going to give us uh, 60, right? So 58 plus 2 is going to be 60. So what do we have here? This is going to be 5. Is Now this is the addition property of equality, right? And lastly, step six, we just need to divide eight on both sides. So if we divide eight on both sides, we get x equals, and this right here, we're just going to divide by eight, and 60 divided by eight. Something kind of looks weird about that, because that's going to come out to give us 7.5. And what are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove x equals five. So something's not lining up here. All right, so let's see. I'm not getting x equals 5, so this means maybe I made a mistake uh, somewhere. So let me go and backtrack. So um, this looks good, a, b, b, c, b is between a and c. That's right, let's, let's see how I substitute it. 3x plus 4, 3x plus 4, 5x minus 6 here, 5x minus 6 here, 58. Wait, 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 look at this. Look at this one right here. This is 38, but when I wrote down my given, I wrote down my given wrong. Right, this right here, this 58 should have been a 38. So if that's a 38, then this is a 38. So let's change that, and that should be a 38. So that means when I add over here, when I add over here, I'm not going to add uh, to 50. I'm going to add to 38, so that's going to give me, this should actually just be 40, right? All right, now that looks pretty good. So when I divide that by 8, that's going to give me 5. Sweet. Okay, now that works out pretty good. So we know this because of 6. This is the division division property of equality. Yeah, spell that right. Division property of equality. And we're done. Now, I want to talk about something, okay? I want to talk about something here. There was a careless error I made right here. And, um, you know, some of you could be saying, well, Mr. McCloud, you know, you made a mistake and that messed me all up. I was going through the problem and... And now I have to go and erase it. Now, listen, listen. I'm glad I made that careless mistake because it goes to show you that, you know, we all make careless mistakes, okay? Um, teachers make careless mistakes all the time. But did you notice what I did? At the end, when I realized that my answer wasn't matching up with this, I went back to check. And I identified the careless mistake here, okay? And I was able to fix it. But you know what I see some of you do on the test? Y'all just write, you know, y'all write 7.5. Okay, and you're like, okay, I'm done. No, you didn't even prove that. Or you would have left it 60 over 8, and I've seen this. You would have left it 60 over 8 and just say, oh, that's 5. It must be 5 because that's what I'm trying to prove. No, Stu that's not right, okay? I'm, by the way, okay, I caught myself. I'm not saying that you're stupid. I'm saying that this is a stupid, careless mistake to make, okay? So please, okay, that's what I meant to say. I promise, okay? Nobody in my class is stupid. We just all make some careless mistakes that we don't pay attention to, right? Uh, so you need to do what I just did, okay? We need to go back and just check our work, okay? And that's what I did, and I was able to find the mistake. So do that, okay? And it will save you uh, losing some points on the test, okay? Because one of the most common mistakes students make is the careless error. All right, so I'm going to look at another example. Um, not that one. This one. There we go. I actually already started working this one out, so... Let me kind of erase the comments that I made on this. So this is one with the angle addition postulate. Okay, so um, here let's read the given. C is in the interior of angle ABD. We know that the measure of angle ABD is 47. And we have this information here. So whenever we say that something is in the interior, it means that it's inside this angle ABD right here. So we have C in the interior. So what can we do with this? Well, we can go ahead and start jotting down our facts. So we know one, uh, C is in the interior, I can spell it, of angle ABD. Now why did I put that space there? I put that space there because it's hard to write the angle. Uh, I don't have an angle symbol on the keyboard, so I have to just kind of write it in there like that. So C is in the interior of angle ABD. So why is that? Why do we know that? Because it was given to us, right? It's not as a give us stuff. Give us stuff to work with. So now we can figure out what to do with this. So I'm just going to put a line here to stay organized. Um, 
And what else do I know? Step two. Well, I actually have some more given stuff. So I'm actually going to put that down in step two. Now, could I have wrote it in step one like I did over here? Let me go back. You see how I put all that stuff in step one? Yeah, that works. Now, I'm, I'm going to split it up into two steps. That's fine. Okay. So I'm just going to write down what we know about the angles. Okay. So actually, I'm going to just have to write this out. It'll be a little bit easier. So the measure of angle, let me go ahead and write this out. Okay, I went ahead and wrote this out. So we know ABD is 47, angle ABC is 4x plus 2 from the picture, and CBD is 3x minus 7 from the picture. So that was, once again, some more given stuff. All right, so we know that because of given. So let's write down what step 3 is going to be. Well, step 3 is, this is where I'm going to use this fact that C is in the interior of angle ABD. So we can use the angle addition postulate here. All right, so... What do we know about the angle addition posture? We know that the measure of ABC, this small angle here, so let me write that, measure of angle ABC, BC, plus the measure of CBD, the smaller one, so I'm going to say measure of angle CBD, let's see if I can squeeze this in here, has to equal the measure of the big one, ABD, ABD. So measure of angle A. B, D, I barely got in there. So why do we know that? The reason for this is we're now we're using the angle addition postulate. And once again, we've seen this one a lot. Okay, I don't want anyone looking at this and be like, what? What's the angle addition postulate? Nope. Okay, if you're saying that, then you obviously haven't been paying attention, okay? So what we're going to do with step uh, four. So we have the angle addition postulate. We're trying to find x equals 6. So here's all the stuff that we know about the angles. We can make the substitution, right? So measure of angle ABC is 4x plus 2. So I have to do 4x plus 2. Plus the measure of angle CBD is 3x minus 7. And that's going to equal the whole thing. ABD is 47. And why do we know that? Or why are we able to do that? That's just the substitution property of equality. Nice. All right. So we're making some progress. Uh, what are we going to do next? Well, I'm going to find my like terms. So I've got 4x here, and i got 3x here. And what else do I have? I have the 2, and I have the negative 7. Okay, so for this next step, we are going to combine these like terms, right? So 4x plus 3x, that's 7x. And that's going to be plus 5 if we do this. And that's going to equal 47. And so the reason for this, 5 equals the, this is the simplify. Okay. Remember, don't say addition property of equality or subtraction property of equality here. Don't say any of that. Okay, we're only combining like terms on the same side, so that means simplify. Okay. So don't miss problems on the test for doing that. All right, so now what can we do? We can uh, subtract 5 on both sides. Right, so that's going to give us for step six, we're going to end up with this. So this is for step six, 7x equals, so 47 minus 5, that's 42. And so now we use the subtraction property of equality to, to subtract this 5x on both sides. That's what we did here, okay? In fact, I might just write it in there so you can see that's what we did. We subtracted 5 on both sides, okay? So now we have 7x equals 42. So you can see the last step is we just need to divide 7 on both sides, right? And it's going to give us this. For step 7, we're going to have 7 is 42 divided by 7. What's that? Well, we know that that's 6. So we have x equals 6. And now we're using the division property of equality. Now, let me put a little space there to divide it, just so we can stay organized. There we go. So this is it. This is how we use uh, the angle addition postulate to prove this. Um, so let me know if you have any questions about this. I'm going to be trying to post some more examples uh, in the future for you to use as a resource at home. But let me know if you have any questions.